The people of Dade County, Florida, know what it's to live through a hurricane. In 1992, Hurricane Andrew changed their lives forever. A devastation, a tragedy like this coming into an area just shakes up people's lives for years and years to come. The nightmare began on Friday, August 14th. Like all hurricanes, Andrew began life off the coast of Africa in the warm waters of the tropical Atlantic. Hot, humid air rose up to create several thunderstorms around an area of low pressure. Because of the Earth's rotation, the storms rushed into the low pressure area in an anti-clockwise direction, like water down a plug hole. This spun them all into one enormous system, which was driven across the ocean by powerful winds. Four thousand miles away in the United States, the swirling mass of thunderstorms had already been spotted. They'd not yet formed into a hurricane, but they were seen as a potential killer and were being closely monitored by hurricane experts. One of them, Stanley Goldenberg, had flown through many hurricanes, but this time, his experience was going to be very different. I was asked to fly Hurricane Andrew and love to go out there and fly, but I said, nah, nah, my wife's expecting, I wouldn't want to be gone, and then we didn't dream what was gonna happen. Andrew continued to build. Like all tropical storms, it was fueled by heat. Warm water vapor within the cloud is attracted to surfaces of minute particles like salt crystals or pollen, causing the water vapor to condense. This process, changing from a gas to a liquid, releases heat. And in a storm the size of Andrew, the result is vast billowing updrafts, which suck in more moisture from the sea's surface, creating more rain and more heat driving the wind speed higher and higher. By Thursday morning, as the energy within the storm grew, the wind speeds accelerated to over 75 miles per hour. Andrew was now officially a hurricane. On Friday, the hurricane watchers saw Andrew weaken and turn away from Florida. We thought it was going to fall apart and move out to sea. I still remember seeing the headline in the Miami Herald, Andrew weakens and moves out to sea, don't we wish? By Saturday morning, Andrew was gaining strength as the eye of the hurricane hit the Bahamas with wind speeds of up to 122 miles per hour. Florida lay just 10 hours ahead. Andrew was now 100 miles across and the outer edges were already lashing the Florida coast. Having spent years studying hurricanes from the safety of his desk, a bizarre twist of fate meant Stanley, his family and new baby were about to become victims of Andrew. This is our house calmly waiting for Hurricane Andrew. Later that night, trapped in the family home, he hoped the eye of the hurricane would pass away to the north. I remember going through denial. I mean, this isn't really happening. I couldn't fathom that in the midst of all this and dealing with the new baby and everything that I had to deal with a hurricane. If you can see it, the beginnings of Andrew. Uh, this is just one little squall. We have much more to go. Sunday, 23rd of August, and we're gonna weather it out at the through the storm. Hi, Daniel, say hi. Hi. Boy, you can hear that. Yeah, I don't know if this video will pick up anything out there, but oh, it's coming. Okay. People talk about like a tornado that sounds like a, a freight train or an airplane going right by you. Well, this was that kind of sound, but it just seemed to always get louder and louder. I mean, it is blowing out there. I certainly have never seen anything like it before. We can feel our ears constantly pop. Winds outside, I think, are at least 110 miles an hour or more. Aaron, are you okay? The highest winds in a hurricane are found around the wall of the eye, the outer edge of the black ring. And at 4.35 a.m. on Sunday morning, the deadly eye wall of Andrew hit Dade County at 175 miles an hour, destroying the radar that produced these images. 
People ask me, did you hear the roof rip off? Something must have hit the kitchen living room wall and it fell on us. Things were pressing down on us and we were in this tiny little space. The water level was rising. Things getting louder and noisier and we thought we were gonna die. When the roof gave, and we were in about the most terrifying situation we could imagine during the worst part of the storm, we were just pinned under the wall right there, fell on top of us, and pinned us there, kids crying, us crying, thanking God that we were all safe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It kind of shakes me when I see the film at times because at the beginning I think, these poor guys don't know what's gonna to happen to them. A few blocks away from Stanley's house, a neighborhood of prefab houses sat right on the leading edge of the eye of the storm. The lightweight structures didn't stand a chance. This though is the worst. This is a trailer park at about, I guess, 137th or so and 152nd. And there's many trailer parks in this area of town. Just another typical street here. Everything, total rubble. Some people in their wildest dreams, the worst wind they've ever experienced is a strong, strong thunderstorm. Maybe they've seen 50 mile an hour gusts where power lines have come down and some trees go down. Well, the force of Andrew was almost 15 to 20 times that kind of force. Hurricane Andrew terrorized the people of Florida for six hours. And by morning, 23 people had lost their lives. High above the coast of Florida, there's a wind that's even faster